John, welcome to Birmingham City Football Club. I imagine it's been quite a hectic 24 hours for you. It has. Uh, it certainly has, but a uh, very exciting 24 hours as well. And uh, you know, I'm very proud to, to be the head coach uh, of a fantastic football team. Um, and I can't wait to get going. What was it about this role in particular that appealed to you at this stage in your career? Um, I think I'd been offered uh, two or three really good roles as head coach uh, in the championship over the last couple of seasons. Um, and uh, I was enjoying my development at QPR, I was enjoying working for two fantastic managers and obviously my time at QPR eventually came to the end. This job came up and you know it's a, it's a great fit for me, you know, working in Birmingham. I'm a Birmingham lad and as I said, um, you know, I'm really proud uh, and honoured to be uh, head coach of the club. You've obviously met the players this morning for the first time and taken your first training session. What are your first impressions of them as a group? As a group, fantastic attitude, different class. You know, the senior boys were top. All the young boys that came up and joined in with the session as well were, were excellent. You know, there's a lot of potential there with the young, young players. And um, I couldn't have asked for, for a better day, really. You know, I was, I was really pleased with the way they applied themselves. All the staff around the training ground were top as well. So, you know, it was a good day. Yeah, and you've mentioned some of the young players that the club have got here, but you'll also know some of the senior boys, Scott Hogan from your time with Ireland, and then, of course, Troy Deeney from your Watford days. Is it a case of getting to know the players as best as you can now in this next week to, to four weeks into the start of the season? Yeah, definitely, and, and I think the ideal uh, preparation for that is we go to Portugal on Wednesday. Do you know what I mean? It's a, a big week for us uh, to get the group um, really galvanised, uh, get them understanding some ways we want to play, you know, just getting that team spirit, that bond, uh, which is going to be key going into the season. You know, the squad isn't big at the moment. Um, and wherever we go next year, it's important that everyone's in it together. And a week like this coming up is, is perfect preparation for that. Is that your sort of priority now is, like you say, get everybody together, create a bond, create that sort of togetherness as a group in the early few days? Yeah, definitely. Everyone's got to be proud to play for Birmingham City. Everyone who works at the club have got to be proud to work for the club. Do you know what I mean? I'm a Birmingham lad. I want this club to do well now. Do you know what I mean? The fans, they deserve success. It's a massive football club and, you know, we haven't, um, over, the few, over the last few years, we haven't performed as well as we should to, what, for whatever reason. Uh, but potentially, these fans, they deserve success. Do you know what I mean? Now, short term, it's going to be very tough. But long term, you know, that's the, that's the plan. Um, so this short term period now is going to be tough times, but we need the fans more than anything to get behind, right behind uh, the players who are going to be performing week in, week out for the club. Yeah, that's sort of my next question really. You signed a, a three year contract here at the club. What is your, your vision for that time frame, the sort of long term, bigger plan that you've got for the club? Well, short term to be competitive. You know, and to build a squad. You know, as you say, we've got a lot of good young players coming through. Will they be ready at the moment? We'll see. Um, but, you know, um, my long term project for the club is to, to make us be as competitive as we can in the championship and, and finish as high up in the league as possible. You know, so uh, it's small, small gains, first of all, for small steps, you know, and, and the most important thing is that we have a really good pre season. Uh, and um, I can impl implement my ideas and the staff's ideas on how we want to play and um, take it from there. I think people on the outside often look at Birmingham City as a football club and say there's huge potential here. If you get it turned around and moved in the right direction, you've got some club on your hands. Is that a view that you share as well? Yeah, definitely. You know, I was at Birmingham as a schoolboy. You know, I came and watched lots of games uh, back then. Uh, I saw the potential. I saw. I saw what it, what it meant to the fans. Uh, the Blues were in the Championship, in the in the Premier League. You know, the fan base here is top. Do you know what I mean? And and as I say, you know, if we can give them a team to be proud of, you know, then that's all I want to do coming into this football club. The, the fans deserve success. They de de deserve to. Uh, be proud of, um, of that squad of players who's representing them uh, week in, week out, and, and that's what I want to do. Join us having most recently been at, at QPR. What did you take from your time there working under two really experienced managers in, in Steve McLaren and Mark Warburton? Yeah, again, two, two gentlemen of the game, you know, two excellent coaches, two excellent managers. You know, I learned a, a great deal for them. Um, in the first year with, with Steve, I learned that you couldn't go in and play expansive football straight away. You have to adapt. You have to use the players and what we could we could use. Um, you know, so uh, football philosophy for us there wasn't what we wanted, but we had to make the best of what we had. Uh, the club grew 
Uh, we, uh, we brought a philosophy in uh, under Steve, which Mark then carried on. Um, and then you could see that, you know, QPR have reaped the rewards uh, after that, you know. So, you know, my experience working with two very experienced managers is it takes time. You know, nothing's done in the short term. And, um, you know, this is a long term project and I'm here for the long term. And um, it's going to take time, but we'll get there. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, those words identity and philosophy associated with sort of QPR is that is that something that's important to you as a head coach that you can sort of impose that on your teams as you say it's going to take a little bit of time but is that something that's important to you? Of course it is but the most important thing is that we we are competitive and we're getting results because otherwise um, I probably won't get that time <laughs> you know so it, the most important thing for me is that we that we build a, an identity that we're um, a very, very tough team to play against. You know, we're hard working, we have a certain way to play, but the most important thing is that we're competitive and, um, as I say, we, we, we make the uh, fans very proud of watching us week in, week out. And does it often depend on the players that you've got at your disposal as well? You can have an idea in your head, but if you haven't quite got the players to, to fit that identity, how do you sort of approach that? Is it you have a way of playing, the players have to conform to that, or do you sort of work with what you've got? No, you work with what you've got. You know, that's why it's a long-term project. You know, short-term, we have to adapt. We have to adapt to what the players want to do, how they want to play, what suits them best, you know, and then we make the, uh, the best of it. You know, we, we give them ideas on how, how to play that way and give them uh, ideas, ideas on how to, to defend against uh, championship teams, you know, and set up um, in ways to win games. So, yeah, you have to be adaptable. You've obviously been a head coach before with Kidderminster Harriers, but do you feel that you're better equipped now, having that experience, to step back into the hot seat as you have done? Yeah, well, of course, you know, I've had four years more experience, uh, you know, in different, uh, using different squads, different players. Uh, working with different managers, um, you know, at a very good level. So, yeah, I'm more experienced and, you know, I'm ready to go. Have you thought about how it's going to feel in four weeks' time when you step out and occupy the dugout at, at Luton with that, that badge on your chest? Yeah, listen, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be um, very exciting, very nerve-wracking, you know, but uh, again, a very proud moment. You know, I'm a Birmingham lad and, um, you know, to lead the club out um, in the first game, you know, will be a... Uh, a very proud moment for myself and my family. Yeah, very finally, how important is it for you that everyone here, you know, together, your staff, the players, the owners, the supporters, you have everybody pulling in the same direction to try and change the club's fortunes that we've, we've gone through over the past four or five years. It has to be a unified effort here. 100% and, and I said that in the, in the team meeting today, we had all the staff in, we had all the players and the most important thing is it, there's going to be tough times and the only way we get through that is if we're together and one unit and that includes the fans and the fans are the most important part of that. You know, if, if we've got the backing behind the, uh, behind, from the fans, uh, then the rest will take care of itself. You know, um, as I say, the size of this club, recent years we haven't performed, the fans deserve better and, um, you know, we want to build a squad now going forward that they can be proud of. John, thank you ever so much for talking to us. It's great to have you here and wish you all the very best during your time at the club. Top man.